evening. I sneaked in here. I'm, I'm very good, I'm very good. How are you? I can only be here for about an hour, I have night shift again. It's happening. It's Dengus time. It's time. It's Dengus time. Hello. How's it going, people? Wave, wave for the people like the Queen. Good evening. Good evening, and welcome to the Dengus. Good evening, everybody. Who is here? We've got, well, nobody on the station, but in the chat we have uh, Commander Phil Barnes, and on the and uh, on the radio joining us on the dial. Say hello, Phil. Hello, guys. Hello. Good and evening. We've also got Tokoso, and we've got it's it's Yamato, right? It's Yamato, I think. And then Zakao and Minari and Dark Heavy Eight. How you guys doing? Talking about food there, making me hungry. I haven't actually. I had like a little sort of bagel this morning, but I have not eaten uh, yet. So I'm I'm going to probably not stream for too long because I'm going to get hungry after a couple hours. But uh, anyway, thank you for joining and hello. Good dangus to you. We're here in Jameson Memorial, as usual. The lovely starting plate, the, 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 the place that the elite get everything that they want, at a discount. If you're not elite ranking, you can't come here. But if you have at least one elite, you can come, and you'll find all the outfitting. All the outfitting you could ever desire. And today, look at my beautiful T7. Isn't, isn't she a beast? Isn't she a wonder? With that azure skin. I love the scale on this. Hold on. Let me set up a good shot here. I think it's that one. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this ship. It's huge. Of course, the T7 front is kind of ugly. I don't like the bubble being so far down on the ship. It gives it a large forehead. It looks like, uh, what's his name? Lurch from the Adams Family. Uh, is your mic still alive? I don't know. I can't tell. I can hear you. Can you guys can hear, you hear Phil? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? 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 Anyway, <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. I know. I know my audio. I never screw that up. <laughs> that was a joke. I always screw it up. But that's fine. As long as you can hear me now, then we can get on with this. So, uh, let us look in the news. We have some news here today from the Galnets. Sara. So, where is this? Okay, so oh, apparently there is massive Thargoid presence and marginal Thargoid presence. What else is there? Significant Thargoid presence. Ooh. Is that significant to what? In the Muska Dark region. Lembass. Maybe these would be good actual uh, candidates for system factions. Maybe the Thargoids will kill some factions there. So, yeah, I guess first I'll update you people. Our faction from last week's uh, Comb the Bubble got rejected. All three systems had apparently too many factions or a player faction present or one of the many, many conditions that they don't provide a list for. So it's back to the drawing board. Um, however, we've had some very clever uh, Spatrians, Dark Heavy 8 and uh, Valor, conspiring to build lists. And so, you know, the hunt will continue. We're going to have to do another comb the bubble stream probably next week and do that all over again and then hopefully we won't get rejected for the third time but uh yeah it's it's kind of it's kind of annoying how that all works but i guess it's worth it to get dangus investigations into the game but that's 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 where we're at rejected well i mean like they like the idea they're just like not these systems so we're starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel we got to find some real Real backwater poo holes. We need to find our, our, our true tattooing. 
Um, but what are we looking at here? We're looking at the news, and is it this one? No, it's this one. There's a lot of news right now. Colonia Bridge Project faces possible changes. Okay, is that really news? Like, we've decided to move the highway two meters to the left, people. Anyway, uh, neo-Marlinist forces are gathering in Madrid. Of course, these are like, you know, terrorists and whatever. So, that's kind of interesting, but whatever. What we're really here for is this dredger deadlock. So we have the Scriveners, who were the... It's a dredger ship, which is the one with the that eats other ships. <coughs> I'm saying that correctly, right? That's what dredger is? Bill, is that is that right? You're asking me? Oh, um... Like the Scriveners yeah, are the dredger, the, right? The, they're one of the dredger clans, yeah. They are focused on salvaging knowledge, I believe. Uh, stuff like that. Right, they're knowledge collectors. They, they basically have a collection of knowledge. They have a giant library ship. And uh, right now, I guess there's like Orion University is trying to like, they've got them like blockaded and they're trying to like steal the knowledge. But we want to help these people out because, you know, like, like, you know, like let them do their own thing, right? Like, like if someone came after my comic book collection, I would not let them get away with it. So the Scriveners need supplies. They need people to deliver to the... Where, here we go. The HIP system. I'm not going to read the rest of it. But, yeah, you can see here there's a lot of there's a lot of fleet carriers here, right? Eh? Jameson Memorial Base. That's a pretty funny one. Uh, that's a fleet carrier. But just fleet carriers up the wazoo. And where the hell are the actual stations? I guess I haven't been there, so it's like you don't get to see the planets. But, um, I found a system through Inara that has uh, what is it here the NLT 13249 that is where I'm going to be heading are you, are you you're you already there with your fleet carrier right hey Phil uh, I'm nearby there's no fleet carrier spots in the system so I can't get in my own fleet carrier ah. so I'm checking with some canon people to see if they have a fleet carrier with goods that needs hauling Hold on, let me just get a nice little shot of this beautiful ship in the light. Oh my god. I love that blue skin. It's the Azure. And look at that, just as the light changes and it turns like turquoise. Let me just raise that landing gear. I'm gonna try to get out the mail slot in camera mode. I can do this. The problem with the T9 is, again, her, her wide forehead makes it difficult to navigate. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful. Isn't that nice? Oh, I got a reckless flying. <laughs> what? Whatever. It's just a fine. That does not make you wanted. Bet looking ship of Lake. Best looking ship of Lakon? I don't know. I do like the look of the T10. And uh, the killback is interesting. I like the killback. But the anyway. alliance ships are also lake on. Oh, are they? Uh, I, they are. I, yeah. I don't know how I feel about the frogs. Like I'm not like I, I hate the, the. I've never flown them, so I, I can't really like comment on their like performance. But I don't really know if I like the look of the chieftain lineup. Like it's it's okay. It's okay. It's different, at least, than the other ships. I wish there was more variety, though. Like, I wish it wasn't just, like, the Federal ships, where the, it's, like, three ships that look the same. Like, at least with the Imperial ships, I guess, like, the Cutter and the Clipper, I get them confused all the time. But they just look like bigger versions of the ships, whereas, like, the Federal ships and the Chieftain line, they just look like the same ship. I know there's, like, subtle differences, but I don't do subtle. <laughs> the least of your opinion is the keelback. Really, is a cow. Wow. I like the, I like the keelback. I like its little uh, stubby arms that rotate. I think it's like it's like basically like a, a, a nicer, more unique version of the Type Six, which is like, you know, it's like if you're comparing the Type Six and the keelback, you'd always go keelback. In terms of looks, anyway. Uh, yeah, it looks too much like frogs, but to be honest, the Crusader is the most balanced one. Yeah, I've never really looked into it, but, um, yeah, I mean, like, eventually I'll buy one of them, just to have it. 
I probably wouldn't need all three, though. But I am kind of like... My end goal in Elite would be like... I would be considering myself having, like, mission accomplished if I just have one of every ship, like, specced out, ready to go. And maybe two of some. Like, I already do have, like, like one Type 9 that's more geared for mining, and another that is geared for trading. Or is it combat? But, you know, I like, I like the idea of, like, specking out different ships for purposes, right? Yeah, indeed. Like, I, I can have, like, four Cobras, and each one has a different, like, function. So, my, you know... My eagle, my eagle is built for, for one thing, and that's uh, farming wake scans. A wake scanning eagle, interesting. Yeah, because it's very fast, and it's crappy in combat, so why use it in combat? And sometimes you gotta scan those wakes just to build that... the damn engineering grind. <laughs> Indeed. The wake scanning thing I think was like the most f like frustrating one for me because it's so random. And it's just like, well, I just got to go to a signal beacon or sit around by a starport and wait for ships to jump out. <laughs> it's like there's no like natural gameplay progression. Like would you would you do wake scanning in a combat zone? No, you you, you wouldn't have a wake scanner on your combat ship. But, like, you, you have to pretty much, like, go out with the intention of scanning wakes. I, I guess you could, like, I'll sometimes bring along a wake scanner, but then you forget to scan wakes. If you're not, like, going out to doing it. And, like, doing I, it I is think, not very fun. I think the idea, my, my uh, idea of why they made it like this is, like, they had this idea of you're supposed to be drifting, you know, just going from place to place, selling cargo, buying cargo, doing missions. A lot of the gameplay seems to be focused around this idea, like take power play for example as well. Yeah, I guess like with trading, you could have like a trading slash wake scanning expedition. Because you're like going to places where there will be wakes, right? From system to system. We're going to Lewis Orbital, I think. Um, so yeah, I can, I can see that. Like, um, you know, like I'm, I'm going to go do a rare trade loop and then like scan wakes along the way. But like, don't you like some rarer wake signals? Do you have to go to certain like you have to like scan wakes in a combat zone or something like that? Or is uh, it just I like think all all wakes are the same? There's no difference in the wakes themselves. Oh really? There's no just, difference between like yeah, like yeah. like a high a high wake and a low wake. I don't think so. No, it's just a quantity difference. Like, like where they are more common, you know. I just want to be able to like buy wake scans <laughs> in bundles. Ah, uh, don't we all? It's one of those things. Uh, where I, I think like like again, it's like it, there's a lot of th things in this game where like if you're not spec to fight thargoids, you should not fight thargoids. If you're not equipped for mining, you can't go mining. Like it, it, there's no real ship that I've flown that can be good at everything. I don't know. It's, it's like, I, I've never really flown to, like, Anacondas and Corvettes, but, like, they're not good at everything. Like, you can't put mining gear on an Anaconda and fuel limpets and etc. So that's just part of the, the part of the fabric of this game. That was a hard stop. Where's the orbital? Oh, God, okay. That was some weird popping. Are you getting weird popping? No popping here. I get popping when I'm landing on the stations. It's a massive pop. Uh, wakes are just rolling the dice to get what you want, not fun to aim for the better and get whilst playing. Well, I'm like, I like the idea of like scanning wakes to get data, but I think like, I don't know. For me, I think a lot of like collector limpets and wake scanning that, that could like collect materials for you. Like, if you had a wake scanner that was on a turret, and you just had to drive near the wake and turn it on, I think that would be better. But, like, having to, like, get a certain distance to the wake and face it and scan it, like, you can't be doing other things while you're doing that, right? But it'd be cool if, like, it was just mounted on a turret, and as long as you were near a wake, it would go point at it and scan itself. That would be what I would like to see from a wake scanner. That way, you could just like be in a combat zone, equip a wake scanner, 
get people to run away and then just like you know start fighting the other ship while your ship scans its own wake you do it computer you don't do anything you just sit there and tell me what's wrong with the ship i know what's wrong with the ship everything it's fine i'll just repair all structural left see the paint job was damaged i don't know why space just does that all right so what are we doing here we are buying power emergency power cells here we go and you can see here the supply is 11.6 million so there's quite a lot to go around we can take just under 200 per haul so i guess do we want um should i deliver this to your fleet carrier phil Uh, no, you can go to the station. Uh, I did manage to get a spot in the system with my fleet carrier, but probably it's going to be near the main star. So it's going to be uh, 37,000 light seconds from the delivery point. Well, why don't Should we just go to Orama's station in the, well, in the Jute system? And, and I'm thinking maybe I'll do one run um, to the destination system to see how it, how it works without the carrier and to scout it out see how many gankers are there because we aren't open so and this is a cg yeah because it's only what four jumps so maybe yeah i'll do one run and then we'll see what happens and then if because oh because you said what the destination system is like 37 light years or, or light seconds or light uh, miles yeah, the, the um the, the delivery st uh, station for the um Trade CG is uh, 37,000 light seconds from the star, yeah. See, that's not terrible, but like that does leave you vulnerable in Super Cruise. So that's like a good ganking opportunity, right? Yes. Interesting. Okay, let's try it once, and then if if uh, we get completely gank gankified, then we'll try uh, ferrying to the carrier and doing a, a big one big trip. Because this is yeah, it's only four jumps in my Type Seven. Because I got a Guardian um, Frameshift Booster or Sister. You, st oh, you have it now? Yeah, I got that. Yeah, yeah. So I've got uh, the Guardian Frameshift Drive Booster 5H. Which gives me a nice little boost on my T7. I still need to get like the power plants and a bunch of the Guardian weapons, but that requires grinding. And eh, eh, not right now. I'll grind when I'm dead. Uh, you got stations rendering in backwards, and then they pop back right into the right direction. That's kind of cool. Uh, Zakao, you can fit, can fit a ship to do everything. One, my Python, well, like, yeah, you, like, you can, Pythons and, like, Anacondas, you could expect them to do, like, a number of things pretty well, but it's not going to be good at everything. Like, you could put a mining laser on a Python, but then, like, that's going to give you a disadvantage in combat, right? So there's just like there's no there's no perfect ship that can do everything, and that's kind of what I like about the game is that there is no uh, one ship that can you know like everyone would clearly want this ship. Like there still is a reason to fly small ships or medium ships and specialize them. Uh, you can mine with it, shoot some mobs with it, and can jump too. But yeah, yeah, I mean like you could you could go bounty hunting and just have a mining laser and occasionally mine while you're doing that in a python. But you're not going to be like you know perfectly equipped for for combat. Like if a player came in, wanted to PvP you, like you know you've got a refinery, you've got a mining laser, you could have um, extra hull points. But that's what makes it interesting, right? Like it also makes it frustrating sometimes because like you're never you never seem to be perfectly equipped for any situation. So you're gonna go out there and get interdicted and. Oh no, I don't have uh, shields or something, right? Uh, you have an eagle at Jameson. This is Bongo Baggins speaking. Uh, I have an eagle at Jameson with fully engineered enhanced thrusters and a wake scanner. Nothing else, not even a shield. Does that sound like yours, Phil? Your wake scanning yeah, eagle? Much. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. So maybe the wake, the wake scanning eagle is a, a meta. Uh, the Coriolis hologram arrows have always been there. You talking about like on the on the little thingy down there, like that thingy? Because yeah, like that, that took me a long time. Where it's like you ever get lost trying to find the damn mail slot on a Coriolis station? <laughs> it's like there are arrows on the side of it on the radar. 
Uh, you always like these Jot things in video games? What's Jot? Uh, I think it means Jack of all trades. Oh, Jack of all trades, okay. I mean, yeah, like, when I'm, like, in games like Diablo, it's like, that's another game where, like, you know, you have very specific classes. Like, you can't be a tanky mage. I mean, I guess you could, but, well, not in Diablo, anyway. But in, in, in role-playing games, it's like, yeah, I always find myself being, like, like Skyrim or something. I'd be like, okay, I'm a stealth archer, but then I'm going to become the head of the Mages Guild and the Fighters Guild. You have to be everything. You kind of like to buy a catalog of ships on Jameson just for the heck of it. Yeah, I want to have, like, a fleet of every single ship in the game. And some there will be duplicates for... You know, different tasks. I think that's a fun project. Like, again, it's sort of an elite. You gotta just, like, figure out what the fuck you want to do, right? <laughs> oh, I've already got your wing signal. That's nice. So, so far, I do not see any gankers. Let's just check the, uh... Yeah, I'm not encountering any... Oh, wait. Now, now, now. So, ooh, okay, there's a lot of people here. Ooh, boy. Ooh. It begins... Lord Torres, Wild Priest, Obsidian, Sonia Jane Maria, Raimondo Cat, and Vlajni. All of these could be potentially gankers. And I see two of them on the radar behind me, so that's never a good sign. If they turn triangular, that's when you gotta worry. But I'll, start, I'll keep spinning like this. I'll spin like this, it'll confuse them. They'll think, what is he doing? We need to, we need to stand back and observe. But I think we're, our ultimate destination is what? Uh, let's see here. Uh, this is a big system. It's the Oramus terminal. Oramus. B-Star. Aldus? No. Where is it? Oh, Oramus. Okay, it's literally like the furthest one. Son of a gun. Uh, Zakao, what are you saying there? Uh, what... What about the HIP system you mentioned earlier? Um, that the one that we're in, HIP four three six seven zero. This is the uh, end destination for the community goal. So, the basic plot is yeah, the Scriveners are this Dredger clan, and they've been you know wandering around the universe hoarding knowledge and books and you know eating 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 thoughts for breakfast. Um, and now they are being blockaded by this university that's like, yo, we built that dredger generations ago. Uh, so like, we it's our property. We want you to get out. We want your we want to eat your books. And the dredgers people are like, no, fuck you, dude. So um, the community goal is basically like, yeah, you have to deliver power cells to the dredger, or you can support the university that is like trying to fuck up the Scrivener's day. So, I'm all about the underdogs, and I like these, like, you know, space-based people on a generation ship that have been, or, well, I guess it's not a generation ship, it's a mega ship. But, um, I like the idea of the Dredger clans, and I'm all for the Dredgers. So, I'm gonna support them Dredger people. But it's a pretty interesting storyline, and then in other news, um, the Galnet thing was decoded, and it basically turned out that Theta-7, the NMLA head terrorist dude, like, you know, 3307's Osama Bin Laden sort of thing, has went to Panjabel, which was famous for the recent storyline of the Far God cult building mega ships. And so apparently, you know, this, this terrorist leader uh, either disguised or hid or stowed away on one of these, uh, one of the three mega ships that were launched by the Far God cult which was a community goal from months ago. So that's kind of interesting to see those threads kind of tying together, the Far God and the NMLA. But um, yeah, I'm not sure if there's any next steps that you could find in the game. Like if you were to track down these mega ships, would there be anything to find in their local news or hacking their data arrays or something? I don't know. What do you think, Phil? Is uh, you, you have an ear to the the ground of canon. What what is anyone investigating these mysteries? 
I, I haven't heard anything turn up uh, in, in Panyabel since uh, the, the decryption. So I don't know what's... I think we're just kind of waiting for the next Thursday, which is usually the day when <laughs> mysteries uh, unravel. Ah, uh, yes. The day that mysteries are mysteriously inserted into the source code of the galaxy by the Lord Braben. But uh, I did learn that the, the forums uh, did uh, succeed the decoding, it was not canon, so... But uh, they did work on it a lot, but did not find the answer before the forums did. Well, it's funny, because I, I, yeah, I looked at the guy who posted the answer and, and wanted to know how he solved it. And I was kind of on a, a similar track, where I was like, okay, you got to divide all these numbers by 7 or something, because theta 7. And it was more like you had to arrange them in a grid of 7. It was, like, really complicated, but it was kind of like... I was like, oh man, if I had just kept going, I could have maybe eventually stumbled on it, but I think there's another step where I'm like, no, I would not have known how to do that, like converting it into hex or something. I think they are designed to be solved by a community and not a person. It's too difficult for that. But I'm like, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you, know, you, you know, you just never, you never know. Like one person could, like, I guess it was just one guy in the end of the day who figured it out right like he was he working with other people oh, i don't know did he have help did he have a mole he knew a mole no idea but no i, I like the idea that, that they're throwing out puzzles like that but definitely it's like this one was a tough one although i don't think it was as tough as like the one where like you had to download the audio and run it through a spectrograph to get the hidden message and then decode some like geometry that was a pretty crazy mystery. Of course, talking about like the unknown probe uh, signal sources or whatever. Were you, did you, do you remember that, Phil? I was kind of before my time, actually. Oh, those were the days. But I've seen the videos. Yeah, like I went and actually like did it myself. Like I saw someone. Oh, they they decoded it, but then I recorded the signal source ran it through a spectrograph and then like you know the, the thrill of just seeing the image in the audio was very cool definitely like the the problem is of course like there should be in-game tools to do that right like if you could if they inserted like this random spectrograph module and everyone's like oh this is useless but then you could use it to like download these things that would be cool but you had to do all that stuff out of the game. Which was lame. And still is kind of lame sometimes. Yeah, there's somebody fleet carrier here. Uh, Tigger, if I come down to the CG in a couple hours, will someone please attack me? I'm getting PvP withdrawals. P.S. I love you, Ghost Draft. <laughs> I think you got the wrong channel, buddy, but I also love Ghost Draft. Ghost Draft's amazing. Those guys are hilarious. What CG? Um, was it got the CG is, uh, it's, uh, it's like a trade CG. You have to bring emergency power cells or... Hold on. There's three... Three things. Uh, emergency power cells, power converters, or power transfer buses to Oramus Terminal. And if you do so, you can help these poor Scriveners uh, get back to their space wanderings and knowledge gathering. Which sounds pretty peaceful, like, you know, like, sure they go around and eat other ships with their dredger, but... Are they really all that bad? I am for the dredgers. Oh yeah, CG. CG stands for community goal. Damn it. <laughs> okay, I'm like... I'm like, I misunderstood the question. But yeah, CG is for uh, community goal, and then CQC is for um, CQC, which we can queue for later, but... Where, did, where is it here? It's somewhere in here. Hold on. Is it under here? Okay, maybe you can't do that when you're in a wing. This is so confusing. Where do you queue for CQC, damn it? Did they remove it? It might be because we're in a wing. But we'll try queuing for CQC later. I figure let's, let's help the damn dredger first, and then we will, like... Then we will feel good about ourselves, and then we can murder people. And then the two, the bad feelings and the good feelings will cancel each other out. Whoa! Okay, that's some damn popping. You did like, not get uh, interdicted? No, no, no. You it, made it, no trouble? Yeah. Oh, no big deal. 
See, this is the, like like a lot of people are uh, you know avoid open because of uh, you know the, the possibility of getting ganked, right? Which is fair enough, but the weird part is is that the odds are actually quite low. And and even earlier when I was getting ready for the stream, I went in Shinrata. Some guy interdicted me, and I just got out of the interdiction. So you know, it's not. Um, it's not as bad as people think it is. Although when it when it happens, it definitely don't feel good. So we're gonna let docking yeah, I, computer do the work here. I, I did get interdicted when I entered the system uh, before a stream. You got interdicted? Mm, yes. Did you die? Is, uh, no, I didn't die because the cutter is OP. Oh, a cutter. Yeah, sure. It can't be mass locked by anything except for a cutter, and it's fast and very tanky, so I can just slip away. Hmm, I'm starting to think docking computer may not work because we've got some borked NPCs here. They look to be bumping into an invisible wall. Or maybe they are practicing some strange ritual. The space seesaw. What are they doing? They do seem to be moving very slowly in, in that direction. <laughs> They're limping! Their ships are limping. Oh, hello. Just so you know, my docking computer could activate at any time and ram your vessel, and I am not responsible for any fines. Uh, we've got low speeds, it's fine. <laughs> you know what? Screw docking computer. I'm going in manual. Oh, no, that was boost. Oh yeah, see, see, yeah, we would never get out of here. Look at that traffic. I just feel like the guy who, like, you're in a traffic jam and then he pulls onto the shoulder and just goes, like, 20 cars ahead and you're just like, you douchebag. But I'm not going to wait for damn NPCs. They are subhuman. Wow, that was a dramatic lighting shift. I am noticing some weirdness. I don't know if it's come from the latest update or whatever, but there's definitely some, like, the game is running pretty good now, but there's some weirdness. Uh, so, what we want to do is first make sure that we are signed up for the CG, of course. Alright, so yeah, I see here they have, uh, contribute to the Orion University Knowledge Drive versus support the Scrivener's Dredge Dredgener. The Dredgener. Um, oh wait, Bonds? Wait, what the hell? Earn rewards by delivering emergency power cells to Ormus Terminal. So, I have to go to the Commodities Market and sell all of these lovely power cells we'll make 1.5 million in profit that's lovely and let's see how that ranks us for a measly 198 or 96 rather uh top 100 percent okay so we're just we've got some skin in the game but we want to maybe get to like top 75 percent before we switch over to cqc now here's the thing this CG is at tier 2. I guess there's like 5 tiers. The other one is actually further along in tier 2. So these dredgers really need some damn help, man. Although, this community goal, they want like anomalous bulk scan data, unusual encrypted files, and identified scan archives. So this is like data. I don't like to give data for CGs. What are the rewards for these? Like, is, is this one more successful because the rewards are better? Uh... I guess, is the reward for this just, like, money? Just money, yeah. And story. But then, why would people not go with the Scriveners, man? Dredgers all the way. Dredgers United. Because they are curious about the knowledge core that you were supposed to gain. Otherwise, if you support the Scriveners, they will keep the knowledge core and we won't get the secrets. But like that's my guess. Like I think like secrets should stay secrets unless unless I can have them. <laughs> I want all the secrets and I will tell everyone. But I I don't know. I I I I think that's interesting. Yeah, like maybe people want think that if the Scrivener's knowledge core is tapped, we'll learn something new about Guardians or Thargoids or NPC culture. 
Oh, oh, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, see again, wide forehead. You have to almost like pretend that you are on the bottom of the ship because you kind of are. There's a whole big mess up there. Chairman Wang, how is this happening? <laughs> you got blown up by the station. Oh, I do love it when they when they loiter and then they're just like, "Why are you doing this?" And it's like you were loitering there for like 50 minutes, dude. Like they give you a countdown. Do you really have to ask why? Durin. Uh, let me see here. Yes, fallacy. Fallacy Imperial ships. Your favorite ship is the Viper Mark IV. Wow. It's literally useless. The shield is so thin I could blow through it. That's your favorite. So that's why it's your favorite ship? Oh, yeah. And the Dark Heavy's like, CG stands for, like, Interstellar Initiative. But, like, yeah, remember Interstellar Initiatives? Weren't there, like, just, like, three of them? It was, like, the Blight, the Bridging the Gap. What was the third one? Mm, can't remember. Agriculture Anonymous. I don't know. Like, it was a great idea. They just really did not execute them all. And they just weren't that interesting overall. The Blight one was kind of cool, but it didn't really... I don't... Like, has it had any long-term ramifications? Not really. I guess they added, like, and a Blight system state, but it's like, oh, another system state. Kind of seems like a narrative thing that they scrapped. Narrative uh, method. Or maybe maybe the players scrapped it for them because maybe they're like, oh yeah, like we have this really cool story about this plague that will go across the universe. But oh no, everyone delivered the medicines now. We'll just file that away. Too bad it was really cool, but you guys you guys have spoken. You don't want you don't want cool stories. You don't want the bubble to burn. I do wonder though. It's like, are there cool storylines that will never be revealed because like a player CG went. A different direction, right? No, I think the end goal is planned, but the, the, the road there, maybe not. I don't know, man. Like, what is the end goal? Is it, like, a Thargoid war? Because it kind of seems like, yeah, that could be, like... Right now, they have the mechanic of, like, the Thargoids destroying stations, right? I guess we'll see. I don't know. I would what I wouldn't give to just be like a little tiny insect inside of David Braben's office during like an elite story development meeting. Look at that, we can lock on to Dark Heavy 8 signal over there. That's kinda cool that wings just allow you to lock right onto your your buddy's uh, uh, signal source. Oh shit. Hold on, is this a player? Probably not. This is a really easy interdiction. Get away from me, NPC. Don't like you. Thank you. Goodbye. <coughs> so that wasn't, like, you know, again, like, all in open. Like, there's no, no terrible consequences. No... Did get interdicted by an NPC, but, like, screw that guy. Uh, a CG to put a station in Thargoid territory would get everyone involved, but that would be making motherships. You would do wonder, though, if they if they have motherships as, like, a thing planned. Like, again, there, I thought there was a theory about, like, those Thargoid ground bases actually being motherships that are growing themselves. It's like, people were taking, like, different pictures from different bases showing, like, yeah, like, no, like, they start out like this and they start growing. And eventually, they're all going to take off one day. I mean, the thing does have a giant galactic map room in the middle. But those aliens, I don't know about their design philosophy. It's like, you have to put, like, three different objects into three different pedestals to bring up the map. Seems like, wouldn't a button just suffice? I think that's still a mystery that hasn't technically been cracked, like what the map room means. I think my uh, my theory was that it was a, a stellar masturbatorium. Starporn. Oh, I do like the Vulture. The Vulture is, yeah, I think, 
like I only started flying the Vulture recently. I think it was like Phil Phil recommended a build, and it's really cool. It that that was a lot of fun doing bounty hunting. I would definitely do bounty hunting more often. It's just pretty chill, and you just get to like kill a lot of people, which is great. <laughs> That's what the developers want you to do. Helps with the old combat rank, you know. Which I'm what still dangerous for Dengus, if you will. Uh, yeah, they were growing at first. The well, yeah, like the Thargoid things. Yeah, buy a ship kit. How dare you? I I do buy ship kits and I feel terrible about them because they're like really overpriced. And what I find is like if I could just buy the parts that I wanted individually, I'd be much happier because like in almost every ship kit, there's almost only one option that I'm happy with for each of the categories. So it's kind of like you make me buy all these things I don't want just to get the things I do. I hate that you know sort of model of of things. It's like those, like, you know, people buy, like, Pokemon cards and stuff, and it's like, oh, I got a good one in here, but I got now three duplicates of these crappy ones. And I get it, it's like, it's gambling for kids, right? And that's all good. You gotta teach them to gamble one way or another. Uh, V4 doesn't have any kit. What's a V4? The Viper 4? I means, yeah, I think it means a Viper. Aww. That sucks. If you look closely, you'll find it lacks details compared to the other ships like Python. Yeah, I think the Viper Mark, do, like, I have a Viper Mark III, and I, I just, it's only for going faster than my own missiles, so I can kill myself with my own missiles. That's literally what I made that ship for, but the Viper Mark IV, I think I flew in a little bit, but I was kind of, like, frustrated with small ships at the time. Alright, so more emergency power regulars. Okay, Phil, is your, is your, um, is your thingy nearby? Your fleet carrier? It's in the CG system. Oh, it's in the CG system. Okay, never mind them. Let's we'll just go back and forth. It's 34,000 is not terrible. If that was like 300,000, then it would be like, okay, no, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't even do the CG. You're chilling in solo. Do you need to scout a system for you? Um, I mean, not really kind of a back and forth trade goal and then we'll switch into CQC. But, you know, again, I think like, you know, hang out in the CG system and uh, chase off the gankers or distract them. That could be a good uh, use of, uh, you know, a force, uh, a force of evil. All right. Yeah, this isn't too bad being four jumps away from the power regulators, and it still is quite a distance. Like, it's almost basically like traveling across half the bubble. But that's where it's like those Guardian uh, frameshift drive boosters. Man, they are they are quite handy to have. Indeed. Just plug one in, and like they even come in the smaller sizes. So if you just need that little bit of a boost. Yeah, the size one gives four light years, I think. Yeah, and it's like you could, you know, you could swap out a docking computer for that. And, you know, those four light years again, it makes a difference. Um, like I think after you get around like thirty light years, you're you're usually like the any difference past thirty is just going to make like uh, long distance travel really efficient, but. It's like when you're under 30, that extra 4 or 5 can make the difference between like one route or the other route. And it's like, if you, like, you know, because I remember when you're jumping around with a, sh um, you know, a 16 light year drive, like you can't get from one area to another area without going this huge long way around because all the stars, are, there's maybe a gap of 20 light years, right? So especially for those smaller ships with the very low jump ranges, that Guardian FSD is a, a game changer. Of course, by the time that you have the Guardian FSD, you're probably flying a bigger ship because you would have to do grind for that in the Guardian sites. I suppose, though, you could just outfit a Sidewinder with an SRV and go doing it. 
uh, go shoot down um, those little guardian robots in your SRV. Because the SRV is uh, engineered to perfection. There's no improvements on that. Like, from the very start of the game, you get the most powerful ground vehicle. <laughs> but only because of a lack of other ground vehicles. Right now, you would like a smaller expedition ship that has equal or a bit less than a Conda. Well, I mean, an Asp would probably be the best expedition ship that, like, is, like, a smaller Anaconda in terms of its diversity. Um, Diamondback Explorer would be good, too. But less... Less uh, multifunctionality. Like you, you could put like a refinery and all that stuff on um, on an asp. Dolphin, yeah. Dolphin is pretty good. Asp is better jump range though. Uh, I think uh, dolphin has like nine internal slots or something, and that's uh, the same amount as the crate phantom. And you can get a nice sixty light years in the dolphin with the booster. Oh really? Sixty. And it's also immune to heat. Oh, that's true. The dolphin has huge heat resistance. Which is, you know... Like, why? Is it its beautiful, like, cylindrical shape? Or is it just that, that, that pure, uh... What is it? Gudamaya engineering? Oh, wait. It's Lake on. Or no. Sad Kruger. Uh, Sad Kruger, yeah. Yeah. They do that one, yeah. I was considering actually flying a Beluga today, but it was all spec for passenger missions, and I didn't really want to um, go in and sort of mess up a mess up a build. Although, to be fair, my T7 was spec for uh, combat, apparently. <laughs> we should do some uh, Beluga bounty hunting. Beluga bounty hunting, like just a flock of orcas, and the only and yes. and we only have flat cannons. So you have to get up close and ram them and treat them with flak. Or miss terminal. So yeah, look at all the damn hollow dots. Oh my god. Oh my god. How many people are here? Kevin Banana, Dark Adam. These sound like gankers too. Papa Omega, Yagwa, Deadpool, Sag, Matanusic, Lucas, Lord Torres, VJ. Okay. I'm gonna just say. Pay no attention to the chunky type 7. I'm just here hauling corn. No need to investigate further. See, that's the best weapon against gankers is just like, like almost being too Comedy. suspicious, right? Well, yeah, a little bit of comedy, but like you know, it's just like if they if they know that you want them to come after you, because my type seven is called "Come Get Some," uh, they're gonna think like this is this is a trap, you know? This guy's got like a wing of FDLs or something. He's the bait. And it's a reverse psychology. Yeah, exactly. She's like, oh, like this is too good to be true. It's got to be a trap. You expect like they're gonna interdict me, and then the dude from like uh, what's that like Chris. Chris something. Chris Hansen's gonna come out from uh, behind an asteroid. <laughs> Chris Hansen. It's like that one you like to catch a predator. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Thirty k from Aramis. Yeah, there were so many people by that star, and like no one came after me. The one dude just responded, "Dude, dude, dude, what are you talking about, man?" Get out of the comms, man. Rinsler has a combat type 7. No way. I think Rinsler doesn't play though anymore. He moved on. But uh, Rinsler... I think I did fight him once, or at least I was in the same instance as him. Very, uh, very famous. Uh, uh, did he, he was the one who did the Get Good Guides, right? I don't know. I just know the name. Yeah, Rinsler is definitely one of the the most interesting combat guys in the lead. I remember yeah, he also mm -hmm. he also inf infiltrated my my previous guild under a fake name and eventually got booted because they realized he was a ganker. Nice, subterfuge. I do like espionage in like video games and like I I feel like power play 
if it were more interesting like you know like they, they had that like whole fifth column thing happening right where like rather to, to defeat like a faction that you're fighting against rather than just like playing the game the way it's intended you would join up to that other faction so you would pledge your loyalty there and then just like like tank their reputation or like steer their systems towards different uh states or whatever which was easier um like use your voting power to pick the wrong systems kind of thing and so there'd be all these like fifth columns of like waves of people that would like defect to another faction screw them up to allow their faction to expand and then go back in the end Which I'm like, you know, on one hand, it's just like, I'm sure people were frustrated with that, but that's so interesting to me. Like, that's cool. It's a cool video game dynamic, right? Like, I don't know. I think the coolest thing ever in a video game, I don't know. I'd be interested to hear your perspective on this, Phil, but like, remember as a kid, like reading in PC Gamer Magazine, the story of uh, the guy named Rain killing Lord Britain in uh, Ultima Online. This I is, don't know this story, no. So, so Ultima Online was like one of the first MMORGBs or whatever. And uh, Lord Britain was like the, the creator of the game, had a character in the game, and he would go you know, on parades in the kingdom and shit, right? And one day he was making an appearance, and then this... I guess, I don't know if he's a hacker or just a guy who found like an exploit in the game, was able to like pickpocket uh, like a deadly fire scroll and killed Lord Britain in the game and Lord Britain was supposed to be immortal right like it like he's the developer he said it so he can't die but for some reason this exploit killed him and it was like this this moment in video game history right where like everyone's there in this you know online place and the king is assassinated the creator of the game absolute chaos breaks out Lord it Britain has a that, uh, it reminds me of that uh, South Park episode with World of Warcraft it pro it's maybe it's based on that because um, this is like a famous Probably, moment like yeah. I don't know I read it about it in PC Gamer and PC Gamer is pretty big at the time but to me like that was like a moment where you just realized the because at the time like multiplayer was just emerging right like you, you could you know you had Doom you could just go shoot people you'd be playing Jedi Knight or something but like an RPG and that story and that event that moment in time that like this is all just like video game and it happened digitally no one actually died, but it was, it was enough to make this, like, memorable moment, right? And I'm like, that's cool that video games are getting to this point where, like, you can have a whole story, right? And Elite's very much like, you know, the 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 evolution of that, right? And, and exactly, Tokosa, Salome. Salome was, like, Elite's, like, Lord Britain moment, or at least, you know, so far, Right? Or just like this story of something that happened in the game. And I guess, look, it got a book. So that's like, that's, you know, that's pretty cool. That definitely helps it. Ultima Online, man. I, okay, so the first MMORPG play uh, that I played was The Realm. I don't know if you remember Sierra, but like Sierra was one of my favorite game companies. And they had an MMORPG called The Realm. And that was, like, before Auto Online. Um, although, I never, like, at the time, I was, like, a kid, right? So I just kept signing up for 30-day free trials under different emails. And, like, on day 29, you would take all your items, dump them in your house, create your second account, go in, and take the items. <laughs> at least start your second character off with uh, better stuff. But if I, if, I, if I could go back and play that one again, I would. And I would pay for it this time. But Sierra games are awesome. King's Quest, Space Quest. Uh, what was the other one I liked? Uh, I remember Sierra, yeah. It was like Leisure Suit Larry. Police Quest. The whole Police Quest series was fun. Some, uh, didn't, they, didn't they also do the, the, the Caesar games? Caesar 1 and 2 and 3. Did they? Uh, like Sim City games, but in Roman times. I never played those ones, so I don't know. I, th I think it's Sierra. Well, Sierra did just, like, a lot of good games. Um, so probably. Leisure Suit Larry was another one. I, I particularly like their, like, our cartoony adventure games. Those were pretty fun to play. The Police Quest series was, like, interesting, but, like, these were the kind of things where it's, like, you, you had to literally, like, read the manual or find guides to figure out how to complete these games. 
I remember like Police Quest 2, if you didn't take your gun to the shooting range and calibrate it, which involved like real life math and shit, then when you encountered the bad guy and drew your weapon, y you could never hit him. You would always miss. And in like the original Police Quest, like if you didn't walk around your car and do a tire safety inspection, your tire would blow out and you would die and lose all your progress. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, Ormus popping in there. Monk class and two seer classes. What? Ew, that's Hellfire. Yeah, in the, um, yeah in, in Hellfire. If you well, Hellfire was a game, and then there's like the Hellfire expansion of Diablo One. Yeah, we're talking about the Diablo expansion. Yeah. Ah. Uh, you could, if you made a text file with the correct name and you added some lines of code, you could unlock two secret classes: the uh, Bard and the Barbarian, I think. No way. It was, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> The bard couldn't dual wield and stuff. Oh shit. I don't remember that. It's been a while since I played like the original Diablo. I remember the godly play to the whale. And the butcher. King Sword of Haste. I think like the original Diablo, I want them to like remaster or remake that one. I know they just did like Diablo 2. And actually, yeah, I and I am playing it. I do want to start playing that actually, but the original Diablo, I love the concept of like, it's like a church basement and it just keeps going down and down and down. I loved that concept of just like this spiral and descent, and and like while well, Diablo two was like the better game, and I loved the like the four different worlds and sort of that feeling of traveling from place to place. Man, the original Diablo just like was horrifying, and I remember like when you got to the butcher on level six. And it's fresh meat, and it was terrifying. Like there were some terrifying moments where you just you'd open up a room and some, you know, high level skeleton would come out at you, and just you'd be ah. And like Diablo two was more um, like well rounded as a game, but Diablo one just had like incredible sense of horror and dread. Why can't I pay my fine? Damn it! My notoriety is currently too high, so I can't buy. Or I can't... What the hell? So I cannot... Um, sell my commodities here. Because I got a fine. But I can't pay my fine because my notoriety is too high. Mm. And my notoriety is one. You are screwed. Um, what the fuck? Elite? Seriously? <laughs> yeah, that's always been here. So how do I... Like... Lower my notoriety. The only thing, only way to lower it is to just uh, spend time in game. Oh my god. Yep, one hour per notoriety point. <sighs> well, I guess it's time for CQC! <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I hate Elite Dangerous right now. It's so annoying. That is a really annoying thing, but, well, whatever. We can just check on the community goal, see how it's going. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it hasn't really moved at all. 4.2 million units collected versus the other goal. Where is it? Maybe I can't see it now because I'm wanted due to a fine. That's stupid. Okay. All right. Well, let's do CQC, people. And I just show it to the team. CQC time. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the the main menu then instead of go, like going through the game. We'll just park my ship here. Hey, does CQC time help my notoriety? If I play CQC, is uh, it gonna let me trade the Cynthia? Uh, I think it doesn't. No. Son of a gun. Well, we got 30 arcs for that. Four 20, 24 trade arcs, four exploration arcs, and two other arcs for what? I don't know. Maybe committing a crime. But here we are. So, CQC, otherwise called known as Arena. Which is actually, like, a little confusing to me. Because they, they call it CQC and then they renamed it Arena, but then you go in and it's CQC. I think they tried to, like, half rebrand it, but it didn't really work. Alright, so I can invite people to squads. Of course, it's not going to, like list them in any order, so I'm going to have to go through and find you people. Invite. I'll invite you, Phil. 
I have to get to work in about 10 minutes, so don't bother. Okay. I'll invite Tokoso. Where is Dark Heavy? Oh, Valor's in private group. Are you online, Valor? I'll invite Dark Heavy. Let me see here. Tokoso got in. Into the CQC squad bunch. Invite sent. In the squad. Oh, so yeah, max invite sent. So this is the thing. So if you are wanting to play CQC and you're watching right now, when I uh, click, like, I'll, okay, maybe I'll, I'll put something in the YouTube chat when I click um, searching. You can't have more than four people in a group or in a squad in a lobby or whatever, but. If four other people were to form a lobby, and then we both started searching for a thing at the same time, we might end up together. <laughs> That's how CQC works. Isn't it lovely? We got Dark Heavy. And then, uh, Zakao, are you, uh, are you going to be able to come in? What do you say in the chat there? You're Diablo 3 Elite. Diablo 1 is too janky. Well, yeah, it is too janky, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I want to remake it. Let me invite you again. Once we get you in here, then we'll we'll click. Um, I guess. Do you want to do deathmatch or team deathmatch? Mm, or capture I the think, flag. Uh, team is better. Yeah. Yeah, I think the team one is probably more populated. Like, if we can get four people in a in a in a little squad bunch here, then uh, we're more likely to probably get matched with uh, another squad of four. Yeah, there is a Discord for CQC. Oh, we lost our cubby. What happened? Dark Heavy, where'd you go? I'll send you another invite. Yeah, the team deathmatch is fun. And it's like, the odds are better at winning because, you know, when it's like everyone dying, then, uh, <laughs> or everyone killing me, then uh, I can't win. It's quite much time. Indeed. Just resent the invite to Dark Heavy. Give him a second. Maybe he'll... What fresh madness is this? Oh, here he is. Hello. Hey, DH. Hey. Did you get my uh, invite? Let me see here. I, get, I really wish that this would be, like, sortable by online first. It would be so nice. Uh, DH? You there? Hello? Oh no, he's been ganked. Oh wait, here he is. Alright, he's in the group. Okay, we're gonna start now. I'm gonna do three, two, one in the chat, and then I'm gonna go team deathmatch. Okay. So if you are uh, in the chat, queue up to CQC, you might get up into the same match as us. Or maybe we'll sit here for the next hour waiting for a match. That's also a possibility, unfortunately, with CQC. But, once you do get in, it's pretty fun. It's an area of the game that I really, really wish they would focus on just a little bit more. Matchmaking would be, I think, key. <laughs> but this is the fun part of the stream, where now we can just, you know, sit in sit in the lobby. Maybe, you know what this needs is a little Braven. People can't resist shooting things. Get as far as equipping my sidewinder or something, and then it ditched me. But yeah, I'm up for CQC. Yeah, I think you're back in the group. Are you are you uh you can see it on your side, like it's in searching for match? No, I'm back for queuing for matchmaking or whatever it's called. You seem to be in the group. But it is searching for a match right now. So yeah, in CQC, you know, you're basically flying the ship launch fighters, or the Cyborg and Eagle are also in here. They're kind of like the tanky ships. Um, but you know, obviously these smaller ones have a little bit better maneuverability, and you can outfit them to a certain degree. So you get uh, basically by ranking up, you unlock different things, right? So you can get burst lasers or rapid cannons or heat beams. 
and kind of customize what you want to um, put on your ships, which is kind of cool. But it's it's sort of like, you know, you have to basically like, yeah, see, look, string lights. I can't put my string lights up. But that's probably because it's a ship launch fighter. But like, okay, do you want hypercharge shields or overcharge? It's all like, again, like you have to relearn outfitting all over again. My voice doesn't seem to be coming through in game. Well, probably not, because I, I, not for for um, uh, streaming. I don't know. I do see your little thingy is going crazy, but yeah. So you can see here. Let's see. I've had 32 wins in CQC, 590 kills. I believe to hit elite for. Um, CQC, it needs to be like 26,000 kills or something ridiculous like that. So it's a very, very hard achievement <laughs> that I don't think I'll ever get around to doing unless they, again, sort of focus on CQC and make it, you know, less of this menu hopping. Dark Heavy and Phil, have you guys played a lot of CQC in the past? Not much, no. No? I've never played CQC. I'm proud to say. Really? So this will be your first? Uh, yeah. And probably the most embarrassing of it. So d don't worry, because uh, I'll, I'll walk you through it. So step one is you just got to find a match. And step two is you just search for a match. And actually, step three is not only you get frustrated and quit, but every once in a while, you land on a match. And once you get in the flow, it's just basically, um, you don't need to be embarrassed because everyone uh, will be embarrassed. And if everyone is embarrassed, then no one is embarrassed. Except unless we go against that Picard guy. So there is a guy that named Picard or whatever, and I've actually been in matches against him and he's really freaking good. Or no, wait, is it Picard? Or it's like, it's Locutus of Borg or something. He's like Loc Locutus. Picard is the guy with the blue guy, I think. The explorer. Yeah, Picard is the guy who posts a lot on Twitter. I no, think it's one guy, CQC guy, the musketeer guy. He's really good. Yeah, musketeer. I've seen him as well. Musketeer, and then I think I think it was a guy named Locutus or something like that. Uh, Dark Heavy Eight is really quiet on stream volume. Best to hide half time in CQC. Best to hide half the time in CQC. That's true. Because, like, at least if you're not dying, you're not giving someone else the opportunity to kill you. And in Team Deathmatch, it's like, uh, it's just about kills. Like, whoever gets the most kills first. So it's like, if you're dying all the time, just hide, hide in the asteroid fields. But I think CQC is a lot of fun, and I wish more people would play it. Like, I wish it wasn't as hard to get a match. And I wish you could match make with, like, eight people that you wanted to play with, as opposed to, like, match with four and then hope that you you know find another group uh it's a guy you're like you're probably the only noob who never touched pvp but still flying with a stick yeah well you know what i i don't do that much pvp but cqc is fun and i think part of the reason it's fun is it's like because it's sort of disconnected from the main game like you're not paying rebuy there's no penalty for dying it's okay if you suck in this and you can just kind of have fun and fly and try combat right but what's cool about it is that you're in the smaller ships and you're usually around a facility or they've got like kind of cool maps so you get to kind of like do that sort of star warsy and you know combat where you're shooting a guy and then okay i'm gonna run through the tunnel right so that's kind of cool that's why i like cqc i need to be heading off to work now so I'll see you guys later well thank you very much for joining phil and have a good work have a good night shift thank you bye we'll enjoy you, phil and zakao was looking for a flight stick mount and boy they cost a lot hi-fi hi-fi speaker feet level stupid prices so you bought a wooden stool for five usd attached some inner tubes on the feet and voila a sturdy flight stick mount that's some DIY engineering. Good on ya. Yeah, I, I, I still do mouse and keyboard. I would like to eventually get myself a stick. It does come down to like, I don't know, like a joystick to me would be like, oh, I'd have to put it somewhere and reconnect it like every time. I need to like reconfigure my whole life. You know, it's like I gotta get a bigger desk, which means I gotta reorganize the whole damn room and 
upgrade the other furniture and then, you know, like get a stand for it and that's going to require, you know, even more furniture. I overcomplicate things. <laughs> but I'd probably get the uh, the Logitech one. The, the, the one that, like, Elite, Elite is supposedly based on that one. I think it's the X52. Or X56, I don't know. X something. Well, I'm kind of feeling like it might be a good time to just take a bio break while we're having to wait anyway. Because once we get into a match, usually it will um, continually roll over. But I'm going to put up the bio break thing. And I'll take about... Uh, Hold on, let me make it. CQC bio break. That's all CQC is, is basically one big long bio break. Because this is just, like, this is just us trying to get into um, a lobby, right? But I did expect this. Anyway, I will be back in, um, I'd say about, like, five minutes. The match doesn't load by then. See you soon. And we're back, back on the air, back from the bio break, and still stuck in the menu. And this is CQC, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is the CQC experience. It might just be like three hours of us streaming this, but I'm determined to play CQC. Now we could go back into the game and then queue from within the game, but I can't deliver my packages. So it's supposed to stay in the menu. But what we could do is we could look at um, actually outfitting the ships. So right now I've got like this little tiny maneuverable ship. It's pretty good. It's got two burst lasers, but I could go for like a burst laser and a rapid cannon. That might be interesting. Heat beams. It sacrifices direct damage for the ability to dump heat into the target's cooling system. 
So this can be good if you're going up against, um, you know, someone who has also laser weapons, right? But against the multi-cannon guy, it's not super useful. And a Sidewinder, a tracking pulse. Single pulse laser, laser on gimbaled mount with signature tracking assist. So this is for me to be lazy and let the computer do the aiming. It's got a shield cell, or should I get a shield booster? Yeah, the, the, the Sidewinder is basically the tank in uh, CQC. Let's say armor, I think would be good. Because it's better to do your outfitting while you're in this like stupid menu system because otherwise uh, once you get into CQC like the time between deaths is just not enough. But as you progress in CQC like in Dark Heavy you may not have options because if you're just starting out if you're playing CQC for the first time I believe you only get one loadout and you have to unlock them as you go. Well that really sucks. It does suck because, like, it's so hard to find CQC matches that, you know, you're constant. Like, as you grind, you'll unlock different weapon outfitting, different ships, and, and therefore different loadouts. But when you're just starting out, you have such a disadvantage because you're kind of forced to pick between one or two uh, of the starter options, right? I was going to say, it sounds like another grind wall to me. <laughs> it's another grind. <laughs> Which, again, I don't know if it's like Frontier is just like masochistically into the grind or what, but it does feel like definitely it would be nice to, uh, nice to see them, like, just give us some things without making us, like, do all this work. And, like, weirdly enough, yeah, I got String Lights, but it won't let me put String Lights in an Eagle, which is a ship that should be able to support that. Uh, fighters are very good for PvE bounty hunting. Hey, fighters are a lot of fun. Um, and definitely, like, it's the only reason to ever have one of them NPC crew members. Otherwise, they just take your money with nothing. But yeah, I can't even get kinetic resistance armor because I'm not ranked 46 yet. Anyway, but in other news, uh, you know, I'll tell you, I've been watching some uh, TV uh, lately on the, on the streams. A show called Midnight Mass. I'm only a couple episodes into it, but I have to say so far, really, really good. Really enjoying. I think I might go with Plasma Repeaters. So do you want Chafe or Silent Running? It's kind of funny how it's like, yeah, you have to pick between Chafe or Silent Running. Silent Running I'm probably not going to use with a, a laser-based or a heat-based build. So here you have a boost diverter. That's something that uh, delivers balance speed to power draw ratio. So that just increases your boost speed. Wait, what? Efficiency enhanced is just less power draw. Or a super boost diverter. I think you want the power draw. So yeah, I'll stick with what I got. And yeah, you could sacrifice your shield generator for fast charge shields or lightweight shields. I guess in like, yeah, the Condor, you don't really need to worry too much about weight, but the difference between like 1.3 one tons and half a ton could be like your turning speed. I think we'll go actually with fast charge. Wait, what Lodo was that? Was it the Condor? Hold on, is that the right build that I just did? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna make that my primary. But yeah, I don't know why you have different... I guess it, it gives you like different default loadouts, but then you can go in and customize each one, right? But here we are. So yeah, if, if you uh, haven't seen the show Midnight Mass, I'm not going to spoil anything. I won't even tell you the plot. Uh, the first episode I thought was really good. Just really good filmmaking. Uh, and, and I'm kind of like into the fact that like we're getting all these like TV shows that like really come across as like a 10 hour movie. And this one's kind of a horror theme. Horror, religion, guilt. Those are the themes. Uh... Tigger saying, having deployed a fighter is like 
an extra huge hard point in terms of DPS. This is true. And definitely against Thargoids, yeah, the, the, the fighter will attract the Thargoid swarm and really kind of lay that off you. And then when you're bounty hunting or in a combat zone, yeah, it does act like an extra hard point. And like, a, it's like the fighters have pretty good damage. Now, I really like flying in the fighters. The problem with that is, well, if your mothership gets destroyed, which your NPC is flying for you, then you're going to die. That's just how it works. You stop hearing after horror? Uh, yeah. If you're not into horror, Midnight Mass is not the show to watch. Though it's not like... I wouldn't say it's like an... I don't know. It, it, it's... I, I haven't... I've only got a couple episodes into it. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> I love it, though. I love crazy... Crazy just out the... Off the wall, outlandish horror. And this one's like a very toned down, mature show. Like, I'll give you the basic synopsis. Like, a guy, like basically hits a teenage girl while he's driving under the influence goes to prison for four years and then this like he's coming back to his home on this like small island community where everyone goes to the same church and there's a new pastor that shows up and that's as much as i will say about it um and it kind of unravels in a way that it's like oh god this is gonna get insane so i'm really looking forward to where that show is going uh, you we watched Last of the Mohicans earlier in the week. How did that hold up? It must still be good. I find that like it's weird how I was talking about this too. It's just like you watch like an '80s Harrison Ford movie or you know Daniel Day Lewis in the '90s, right? And those movies still hold up today. The acting is still good, but you watch a lot of movies from like the early 2000s, and they're acting like and, and just like the the concept of the movie and the execution they just don't hold up as well. It's like they kind of like stopped making good movies for a few decades. <laughs> like there are still good movies that at the time were good, but they don't hold up now. Not like some of those older movies still do. I don't know what it is. Uh, the film, you what? The film I totally legally owned is a bad film scan. Half the scenes are blurry. Oh no! Also, some of the most gruesome fight scenes in the movies. I love gr a gruesome fight scene. What the hell else did I watch that had a pretty good fight scene in it? it? Got me really jazzed. Oh, I watched the first episode of Cowboy Bebop. Um, and, I, and this is like not the anime, it's the live action Cowboy Bebop. Which I know everyone's like, oh no, not another live adaptation of a cherished animated property. But it's pretty damn good. I liked it a lot. Uh, John Cho or whatever plays uh, Spike. Phenomenal. I think the whole thing is... is it, it was weird watching it. And I'm like, I haven't watched... Like, I watched a little bit of Cowboy Bebop, but I wasn't super into it. But uh, this, I thought, captured the perfect, like, um, uh, feel of it. It was really good. So I highly recommend that one. That one's on Netflix. Again, depending on where you are, I guess. Uh, it, what are you saying here? It's a somewhat superhero-y film setting in the French Indian Wars. It's just for 1776. Oh, you're talking about Last of the Mohicans. Yeah, that is a good movie. I feel like going back and, and watching that one. That would be a one that I haven't seen in a while. Is that Daniel Day Lewis or is that Tom Tom Cruise? I might be thinking of like Dances with Wolves. That's Kevin Costner though. But yeah, Last of the Mohicans. I think that's Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, John Cho is great in that show. And I'm just like, man, like, it just, it feels like a live action anime, but it doesn't feel bad. It does it well. I was very impressed. You watched a film called Search or something. His film, oh, his film called Search. More Asian faces around it. Oh, yeah, another one that was good was Shang-Chi, the Marvel movie. I like that actor. I'm like, I'd like to see more of that guy in the Marvel universe. I watched The Eternals, though. I think I talked about this a little bit last stream, where it's just, I didn't. I didn't jive with the Eternals. It, it was just way too much. Like, so much thrown at you. It had some cool stuff in it, but... Man, it was just like... Every 20 minutes, I just felt like, okay, it's time time to, like, watch another movie. I can watch something else. What up, Shiv? Yeah, Daniel Day-Lewis, thank you. Yeah, I know, it's, it's gotta be Daniel Day. The old DDL, yo! The chameleon. He is a great actor, though. 
Uh, best fight scene is the Hammer Corridor fight from Old Boy. Hmm. I strongly agree with that. It's definitely one of the best fights. Or you could say the entire the entire movie of the raid. If you haven't seen the raid, that's a pretty good one. Have you seen the raid, Dark Heavy? Yep, from memory, it was uh, uh, either the originator or the Asian equivalent of Die Hard. Um, cops and terrorists in a high tower yeah. fighting out, and there's no way out. Yeah, it, it, it was uh, post Die Hard, though. Um, this was, I want to say, like, I don't know, 2010 or something? I know, I saw it at TIFF, um, at the Toronto Film Festival. And actually got to meet the director after the screening. He did like a Q and A. Um, really, really, yeah. It's like a really simple movie of just like, yeah, we got to go in these this building. This building is filled with criminals. They go in, all the cops get slaughtered, and there's just like one cop, and he's got to fight his way out of the building. And it's, it's pretty much the same plot as Dread. Um, but man, the raid has some of the coolest action, and the movie is just like very focused. It's just. All it is is just like that simple concept of yeah, he's got to fight his way out of the building. But it does it so well. Such a great movie. Uh, are we actually waiting or have you put up a CPC searching GIF? Ha 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 ha! That's the, 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 the trick of it, right? That's what the developers do is they just, they, they put out a 10 minute, 10 minute like GIF and then it starts searching like after that. But no, this is, this is still, we're in the menu, but this is honestly, this is just how it rolls. I'm actually going to go on the CQC Discord. Because I know there's like a PC D CQC Discord and say, trying to get CQC match started if anyone around. I'll just throw that in there and maybe some randos will, randos will jump into queue. I think Valor's still doing the, the, the CG. And please, honestly, help the Scrivners. We want to help the Scrivners. We like the Scrivners. They're very nice. And it, it sucks that I got one fine and now can't deliver my cargo, but such is life. Uh, recently, you're into Native American movies. Yeah. There was one that I saw. I was looking at Carl Urban's um, IMDb. Carl Urban plays Judge Dredd, Billy Butcher in, in The Boys. Bones McCoy on uh, the J.J. Abrams Star Trek reboot series. Uh, great actor. The Carl Urban's in just just a shit ton of stuff. And I noticed there was a um, a movie where it was like natives versus Vikings, and it was I can't remember what it was called. You'd have to like just go deep into Carl Urban history, like pre Doom. And um, it looked actually pretty damn cool. Where it's like a Viking child, like Vikings raided the natives and then like left behind one of their own and so the natives raised this boy is like this like you're gonna help us defeat the vikings when they come back it looks like a pretty dope movie i actually want to see it can't believe i never heard of it before uh not that many good movies that war movie starring nick cage is good on visual story 2 story wise is meh which war movie starting nick cage are you talking about captain corelli's mandolin <laughs> i don't i actually haven't seen that movie which Nick Cage war movie? I'd be interested. You kind of spoiled given you have three monitors. You're all used to wait. <coughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, like, that's the beauty of having different screens is, yeah, you can plop yourself in CQC. Now, it would be nice, like, you know, for a stream if I could just get a damn match started. But, see, Levy. I don't mind talking about TV shows while we wait. Because the reward is playing CQC itself, right? You've already won the match if you've gotten into the match. That is the first victory. Then you can comfortably lose and be annihilated in combat. And not have to worry about it at all. But yeah, we, we indeed are searching for a match. Okay, I'm going to just see if anyone responded. Nope. Derp. Eventually, it's going to go through, I swear. But yeah, if you are watching right now, you want to jump in, play some CQC, just load it up, start searching for Team Deathmatch, and maybe, just maybe, maybe the fates will collide and put us together into a live combat match. But I used to do um, CQC streams. In fact, that's kind of when I, when I started streaming Elite, 
I pretty much exclusively do CQC. It was like every Sunday. I'd usually do it right after the broadcast. The broadcast would end. I'd start doing CQC. Those are the good old days before uh, Josh Hawkins there had a baby and was unable to do the broadcast. However, uh, Scorbius has done a wonderful job keeping keeping the British end up and uh, continuing with the uh, the Sunday streams and the broadcast antics. Although I haven't been able to catch that in a while, but it's, you know I stream on the Saturdays and then it's like Sundays I have to do all the fucking chores. I gotta do my laundry tomorrow, that's for sure. Uh, no, it's a Pacific War movie. Fighting Japanese on some island, they use Native Americans as radio guys because the Japanese don't understand their language. Interesting. Wind Talkers, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll have to check that one out. I haven't seen that one. That sounds like a cool plot, though. Um, Mac and Me was the third best movie that came out on August 12, 1988. And you know what, Shiv? It still holds up. Other movies don't hold up like those 80s movies did. Mac and Me is actually better today than it was in 1988. <laughs> the third best movie that came out on August 12th, 1988. <laughs> it's number one in my heart, though. <laughs> 2002, directed by John Woo. Okay, cool. What has John Woo done lately? John Woo was huge in like the 90s and the early 1000s. A John Woo movie starring a hero and no doves. No doves. Then is it really a John Woo movie? Did he ghost direct? Talking of the British end up. Evening all. Evening Knicks. And keeping the British end up. <laughs> That's my, one of my favorite uh, James Bond quotes. I think it's from uh, Moonraker. It actually might be from Moonraker. That wheelchair dude didn't hold up to gravity. Like what? That wheelchair didn't hold up to gravity. Oh, for, oh, for Mac and me. <laughs> I love uh, Paul Rudd was doing a thing where he would go on Conan and talk about a movie that was coming out and be like, yeah, I brought a clip. And it was like, you know, if it was he was promoting Ant-Man, he would just show that clip from Mac and me of the wheelchair smashing off into the pond or whatever. I'm like, that's a fun, that's a fun, that's a fun prank. Idiocracy hold too true that it's not being funny more. No, I think that, that makes Idiocracy brilliant, right? That's a great movie. Idiocracy. I wish that, like, I had known when it was coming out. Um, I would have gone to find the, like, I think it launched in, like, one theater in Canada for, like, an afternoon on a Tuesday, and then it was gone. They kind of screwed that film over, but Mike Judge is good. I like his movies. Hi, Ray Bobula. How you doing? What up? Speaking of a movie that sucked, but stopped being sucked later on. What you got? What you got? I want to hear it. You know what I watched the other day was a Space tr space Truckers, I think it's called, with Dennis Hopper. It's pretty fun. I, I It was on uh, Amazon Prime. It has a lot of... It's a good streaming platform if you like a lot of older random mass movies. Because it just seems to have a random selection. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's kind of dumpy discount bin movies but honestly like you know I, I saw Space Truckers I'm like I've never seen this before I'll watch anything with Dennis Hopper in it it was pretty fun there's a pretty fun little sci-fi romp about evil robots and such uh, but we are playing CQC so yeah if you guys are just joining now come on in play some CQC we are searching for a match we've been searching for a match for a very long time by the time we get into a match I'll have uh I'll have, like, all my skills have gotten rusty. I've just quit to the main menu and gone for CQC. Game starting in one second. Don't know if that's going to help. Oh, wait. Did you just get into a match? So, wait. Oh, maybe because... Should I restart it then? Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to restart it. I feel like... But wait, so you're not in the party then? I have no idea. Seven of twelve is here, and I'm dark heavy eight, so that's ironic. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try researching. So I'm gonna kick you because you're already in a match, and then we'll see if we can get into a match with you. Like, how many people are in the match there? Uh, I don't know. Uh, 
I went for the deathmatch option. The deathmatch option? Oh, you just went for normal deathmatch. Okay, we'll try Is that. Is there an unnormal deathmatch? There's team deathmatch, deathmatch, and capture the flag. So we'll just try it and see if we can get into deathmatch. Maybe that is easier to get into. We'll, but uh, do, can you like press tab? Are there eight people in that match, or do you think three people would be able to get in? As this is my first time here. Oh, destruction in ten seconds. Apparently, oh. I hit a destruction button. Hold on, I think we just got in. <laughs> we just got in. We just got into a, a lobby. We're going to elevate, but the game starts in 23 seconds. I think it's just us. So maybe if we just do deathmatch, it will literally... So I don't know. What I would try to do, um, Dark Eye, is just like quit that game and see if you can get... Or hold on. Let me, let me go... I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. And then are you going to quit that game and I'll reinvite you and we'll try to do deathmatch? Uh, what, you mean go into the game normally and then wait to be invited or just go back to the main menu and just, just go deathmatch. yeah just go back to the uh, the main menu and i'll send you an invite to the uh i just sent you an invite i don't know if you can join that okay i'll do that because then maybe if we just go deathmatch we'll have to fight each other but um at least we'll be able to play <laughs> and then maybe other people will join watch out for commander musketeer yeah musketeer we were talking about that guy earlier is he's like insane levels of uh of skill and there's another guy like locutus i believe i want to say it was like locutus or something like it and these guys like play a lot like they must you know like organize people and have their whole um you're in there okay cool deathmatch all right so hopefully we'll get in this time looks like it's happening like it might be harder if you have four people in a group because then it, it like needs to find another four to balance it out or something for the teams is what i mean and maybe with deathmatch like yeah it'll just like yeah here we go there we go yeah we should have just done deathmatch from the beginning that's okay though we'll have fun killing each other <laughs> switch back to keyboard and mouse mainly out of convenience since i play on a laptop yeah i i i, I do that could we try to... See, this is the problem to go, so is they need, like, like proper thing. See, yeah, no, Dark Heavy 8's probably... Let me just see if I can turn up... I can't turn up his volume anymore. It's just more that, like, my mic is coming... I can lower my mic a little bit, because I'm red zoning. But Dark Heavy's coming in through the same channel as the music and the game audio. I guess I could try, like, separating those, but... Oh, boy, here we go. All right. It's on. Game on! So we are... Oh, am I on a Sidewinder? I'm in the wrong ship. Uh, no matter. So the first thing about CQC is these cool Star Wars styles. I love it! I love going through the corridors! Oh, wait. We got, we got reds on the radar. Who do we got here? Minari. Zakao, I'm on your I'm on your behind. Watch out. And I'm in a tanky sidewinder. With gimbals. Now in uh, CQC, what's up Minnie? How you doing? It's alright, I might be like really focused right now and miss some of the chat. Because CQC is scary. So the other thing about CQC that's interesting is, yeah, if you get out of the, the vision range of your opponent, then you'll actually break your target lock. So, you know, weaving in and around the structures can be very useful. What's this? Oh, stealth mode. There are also power-ups. Legit. <laughs> you can't see me screw up terribly. No one can see me make terrible miscalculations. There's Togoso. Pecking away at Togoso. You won't get away, rebel scum. Oh, okay. 
maybe you will. Maybe you will. Maybe I'm dizzy now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Boost into wall. Fair enough. Has anyone got any kills yet? I think we're like we're all like a bunch of explorers just marveling at this facility. But nope, I'm on Dark Heavy's butt. And yes, that French song, the Tocoso, um, uh, I guess like performance of uh, La Mer. I don't know if that's actually what it's called, but... I do love this song. Oh, okay, 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 hold on. I'm in intense one-on-one -on -one combat. Uh-oh, my shields are down. I've got two people shooting at me. We're gonna try and weave between the roids. Look at that flight assist off. Reversal. Oh no, his shields are back. That's not good news. And someone is still shooting at me. Now again, this this sidewinder is lovely and tanky, but. You know, it is rather cumbersome. Oh, Tokoso got dark heavy. Oh, that's me. And someone's about to get me. I'm going to try to get behind this asteroid and cut off their vision. You should hop on and start poking people? Absolutely, Minnie. Yeah, if you, if you uh, just join CQC and join Deathmatch, I don't know if once the game is in progress... Oh, hold on. <laughs> I got up on an asteroid. That's what, like, I got my comments in the other uh, window, so I'm, like, not paying attention. But hold on, I have to quickly change my loadout. Okay, I didn't want to be a sidewinder. Um, just floating around. But yeah, I mean, the problem with CQC is that you can only really get, uh, you know, essentially four people into a match reliably using matchmaking. Uh, the other four just have to sort of, like, you have to hope that they get in. Which is kind of like, you know, it's a little annoying. I wish the game was more... Uh, it was easier to put together uh, matches, right? Now these weapons are interesting. Uh oh, I think Minari's going for that stealth. That stealth will break my target lock. Yeah, see, that stealth thing is pretty powerful because, yeah, then you can't really shoot what you don't see. Where the hell did he go? Uh-oh. It's probably behind me. Run away! We'll take refuge behind this large brick house. I love going through those signs. Hold on, we got someone behind me. It sucks, too, because I had a power-up, but... Yeah, these guns. I'm not sure if I like them, but we'll see. We'll see how we'll see how we perform compared to the uh, chunky sidewinder. At least with this condor, I have some better maneuverability. Okay, maybe not that great. Well, like I said, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. We all are winners because we got into a CQC match. Whenever is getting double teamed here. Ooh. He's going for the power up, but no! Blew him up. And then we'll fly victoriously through the cloud of explosion. And we will go for stealth. And then we will cleverly adjust our trajectories. Oh, it looks like Turk had killed Tokoso. That might have been happening behind. Revenge, sweet, sweet <laughs> revenge. <laughs> well, allow me to, allow me to wawenge you. Uh oh, he slowed down. I wasn't expecting that. Oh god. Uh. Okay, boost! Oh! oh! I got him! How's that for Wawenge? It 
was the most Rowingiest <laughs> Rowinge ever. I do love maneuvering through these structures. Like, that is the fun part of CQC, is just like getting that sense of scale. Like, in most space combat, you're just kind of jousting, right? You're going back and forth, and it's, you know, uh, plunging lances into another. Or if you're doing fancy flight assist off work, that might be a different story, but. Let's see if you see, like, that you can really use the terrain to your advantage because there's things to fly around. I think that's pretty cool. Nope, I got someone. It's Minari again. Five, four, three. Wait, there's a countdown. For what? Um, okay. Apparently, there, there we just won. Victory. Yeah, I think we might need to have some kind of interstellar investigation about how that was rigged. <laughs> <laughs> Call the gal cops. Um, yeah, CQC match rigging. It's all doped. Um, yeah. <laughs> there you go. A little bit of experience here. So you get like award screen. So winner, apparently me and Minari, yeah, yeah, Zakao, you actually, you won with me. We, we both got like, I think tied for first. Oh, Shiv I'm up is in the group. Nice. Shiv got in. Here comes Shiv. Yeah, try and get in if you can. Wait, wait, what? Did you self-destruct? Disengaged? What? Engaged? What? <laughs> Who turned it on? But it's like, I try different ships as well. Because um, some ships, I think, are more fun to fly than others. I do like this layout that I've got here with uh, beam lasers. And I wish, like, really, I would like to play the team deathmatch because then we could, like, be helping our wingmates out and stuff. Oh, we've got, like, a, a, a human centipede of, uh, oh my god, okay, that was cool. That was cool. We've got, like, I'm shooting a dark heavy, someone's shooting at me. I do some flight assist off maneuvering. Oh god, we're in the asteroids now. Oops. Okay. Charge, have you made it into the tunnel? I did not. <laughs> oh wait, yes I did. I just smacked myself on the lip. Oh, I see you trying to sneak up on me. Oh! Did not realize. Musketeer is in here? Oh no! Oh no! The dreaded musketeer is here! Oh no! We're all gonna die. <laughs> what are the odds, eh? We were just talking about how this guy's like, you do not trifle with this guy, and he always plays CQC, and he's like, the the number one player, I think. What are the odds that, like, we just happen to, like, run into him? Yeah, I think it's it's gotta be everyone on musketeer, really. That's the only... <laughs> Only way we're gonna survive this. That's awesome, though. I love it. Okay, I I want to hunt musketeer. I oh, know that's Takoso. Well, you know what? I'll take what I can get. <laughs> I'm guard Takoso. Ow! Just smack my head into a. Thing. I think. Did you smack almost back into that asteroid too? Oops. All right, we'll go this way. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Wait a minute, who's shooting at me? I mean, let me put it this way. It's like, now that Musketeer is here, I won't feel bad about losing, right? It's like... Because then, then it's like, it's expected that he's going to sweep us. Who's that over there? I see you there. Who's that stealthy man? That's Musketeer! Get him! 
The winner is Musketeer. Go figure. <laughs> Are you out of here, Sakao? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, look at that. 808 kills. But this is this is great training. Finisher. I do like that you get um, like points for finisher. Just finishing it. But yeah, we are just in the regular uh, regular deathmatch, not the uh, team deathmatch. That was just sitting on the loading screen forever. But again, like that's it's like at the very least, put better matchmaking in. I guarantee you, people will play more CQC. This is kind of cool. You get like it goes through on different maps, right? And you know what? CQC they put like assets in the game that then became like installations. But like, I have the feeling that initially they were just like, yeah, like, like they made these huge installations, these cool locations just for CQC, and then it didn't really pick off because they didn't have proper matchmaking. At least they repurposed those installations in the game. But I want them just like, you know, like like do another CQC update pass, like just one. But like, make it good, you know. All right, we're gonna go for this upgrade over here. That's uh, super speed. I will take super speed. Can't go wrong with that. All right, we got two red dots on the radar here. Who we got? A oh, three. I think that's musketeer. Okay. Let's try to end his reign of terror. Let's give him a run for his money. Can't get targeting on him. He's got silent running, probably. Oh my god! <laughs> okay. I might actually consider changing this loadout. Uh, we will go with this. But that might be the advantage of heat sinks. Like, that really is seems to be a strategy, is, is just stealth, right? Oh, that's Minardi. There's Tacoso over there. Who's Tacoso shooting? Is it Musketeer? If it is, we gotta gang up on him. Uh oh. He probably has a stealth thing going. Again, this guy's like cunning. This is good. I do enjoy a challenge though. Someone just took this power up. Okay, we'll go for speed surge. And one thing you can do is, yeah, draw draw him away from the buildings if you want to be able to spot him. Oh, that sun is blinding. So there's Tokoso. Hold on, someone's shooting. Who we got here? That's Dark Heavy. Tokoso. Who's this third dot? Musketeer, here he is. Got him. Yeah, try stealthing your way out of this one. Just lining up, but I think I've lost my gimbals. Oh no, someone's attacking me. Okay, he certainly juked me a little bit there. Oh, we got another commander here, Commander Viarex. Oh, no, I was killed by Musketeer. But that's awesome, now we're starting to get some people coming into CQC. Maybe, maybe it was from that uh, Discord channel. I alerted, uh, I alerted uh, all the pro players <laughs> to come in and slaughter us. I don't know who this guy is, but you're going to be the subject of my revenge, sir. Oh god. My shields are offline. Do I have shave? Yeah, I do, but I put it on too late. Damn it! Uh, 
Okay, so we've got some hollow dots. We got Dark Heavy here. He's trying to make a tunnel escape. We're gonna follow him in like Star Wars style. Are you using the Force Dark Heavy? Actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna have to shoot this guy. That's right, Shiv. Oh no, Shiv's got the shields! Okay, we're gonna slowly peck away. Ah! Now the thing about this little ship is the maneuverability is great, but it's not much of a tank. It's not really the ship you want to be playing chicken in. Oh god. See, I've got ship shields down, but like... I am my shields. Like, if he gets my shields down, I'm not gonna last long. Okay, one more hit, one more hit. Come on! Come on! Yeah! Yeah! May you seek your woman, gay, sir. Alright, who's next on the agenda? Someone's shooting at me. Tegoso! Ah! The devil. I like how uh, at least Musketeer isn't killing me. Other people might do this all, but uh oh. The winner is Musketeer. I just do. Yeah, even Free Camp is disabled in this mode just because, like, I guess, I don't know. Like, you, you really wouldn't need to use it in this mode unless you were a filmmaker. <coughs> but you know what? It's great to see Musketeer in action because this guy, I am truly impressed by um, his flying skills. Oh, I gotta try harder <laughs> bonus. Like, what do you get that for? Like, just sucking stuff <laughs> That it's just like, listen, son, you need to put more effort into your game. You need you need to get good. But no, it is, it is a perfect place to practice, right? Like, like I, I, I don't know if it's like a one-to-one -one for like, you know, out there and open and, you, you, you know, you get into a situation. But if you don't, you know, if, if you play CQC, at least there's no consequences, right? There's no rebuy. Like, even dying, you're at least leveling up and, and, and increasing your CQC rank. Even just, you know... That's so weird. I guess, like, every ship launch fighter starts off with um, self-destruct. But look at these maps. I do really like uh, these maps. Like, they're cool locations to fight in. Now, I would love to see a dredger map. Where there's a giant dredger in the middle and you could ram people in there. How cool would that be? Maybe that's what happens if you help the Scriveners help the, help them get through their community goal, then they will... Uh, uh oh, someone got a power up there. And I don't see them. Wait, I do. Who is it? Commander Variax. Engage. Such a nice place to be uh, doing this. Now, I, I, I kind of wish that there was like a way to see like... Oh boy, here we go. Launching Chaffee. Gonna try and skirt around this asteroid, maybe. Oh god, hull breach attack. Oh god! Damn you, Musketeer! He really is good, damn it. <laughs> you just got the Mauve Adder! Oh no! There's still damn glitches in CQC? I'm seeing, like, it's weird, because, like, I'm like. You see that visual where it had like the the graininess? Kind of comes in and out. Ooh. Another thing, uh, CQC is like really, really depends on your key bindings. I don't have anything for. Um, I don't really have a good system for pit management. See that? It just got all like grainy and musty, and then like totally not. right to Kozo. You can't get away. You cannot escape the spatula. You cannot escape your fate. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, I'm hitting a master. <laughs> I'd be the least threatening Vaughn villain. Uh, we'll go for the shield boost. Oh, no, hold on. Got this guy to deal with. He's already at 34% health. He's obviously... 
come out of some battle. Uh oh, I think I've probably got Musketeer on me. Damn it! Where did he come from? It is crazy. And totally, I can see how like CQC would not be someone's playstyle. I I am definitely like more into the exploration aspects of this game, but I also really like the combat. But I mean, Musketeer, this guy's this guy's just whoa, whoa, whoa. But Musketeer is just like like he's ruthless, man. He's cold. He kills you. He doesn't even like toy around with you. It's not a game to him. It's just like inevitability. Ah! I got you. <laughs> but for me personally, I think it's I, I think it's nice to have a, a a scary player here who knows what he's doing. Damn. See, that's my one problem with CQC, though, is, like, again, like, if you wanted to get, like, a, a his loadout, like, you can't. It's, uh, you gotta really put, um, just tons and tons of, of grind into this just to be able to unlock the stuff. And it does kind of give people who are, um, you know, further along an advantage, right? When you almost feel like it should go the other way around, where, like, you should be able to get, um... An advantage at the start, and then as you're a more experienced player, lose that advantage. But like I said, I think if the developers were to say, like, listen, we're gonna take a month just to just to bring CQC up to speed, just to give it, you know, we'll give it a couple more maps, give it a dredger base. Um, but really, the purpose will be just like add matchmaking, make it playable, that kind of thing. Then I think it'd be good. Oh, sorry, my phone went off, and I should, had to divert my attention there for a second. CQC is like a laser focus thing. Like you, you gotta be, too, you gotta be drilled in. If you're not dialed in, you're dead. Let's see, where's that damn musketeer? Like, Musketeer, you should be making guides on, like, how to get good, you know? Tell other people your secrets. Tell them the CQC technology and methods and tactics. Share your knowledge, core. Oh boy, oh boy. Like, you know what? If I haven't been killed for like 30 seconds by Musketeer, I feel like I've done something right. <laughs> this guy's just bonking into the station. Oh, you poor soul. You took us all. I am flying with flight assist off, and honestly, not such a good idea on most of the keyboard. <laughs> uh, you just don't see the point of getting top player in a group of noobs just feeding pigs to a tiger. <laughs> it, you know what? Like, I, I wouldn't worry too much about the score. It's just you know, it's a question of are you having fun, right? And honestly, if you're not having fun playing um, like CQC, then I can totally be like, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, hey, play it. I like the combat, and I like that there's like, there's no meaning. Yeah, you're feeding the, feeding the tiger, but the tiger is going to eat anyway. The, the fact is, is it fun to be prey? And I'm not like, uh, I guess like in in in, in games that are like competitive or whatever, I don't feel like the need to, to win, I just want to enjoy them. Uh, Titanfall 2 was a really fun game uh, to play. And what I liked about it was like, yeah, like I didn't care whether I won the matches, I was just like, wow, like those moments of action where you narrowly escape death 
you know, at the last minute, that's what made the game uh, fun to me. And that's what I get from, like, CQC as well, is just, like, that sort of, like, those little moments where you just dodge an asteroid or you just, you know, get through a corridor unscathed. Or would you just kill this guy, damn it? He's so close to death. Just one hit, come on. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh! I was so close to killing him! <laughs> but yeah, I like I think like CQC should have tournaments as well. I think that would be really cool. Like if there were actually um uh, like events that would happen every quarter kind of thing and someone was declared a winner I'd be all into that but no it's still pretty bare bones so now we've lost Shiv we've lost Dark Heavy oh no it's just me Tacoso and, and uh, Musketeer this is just slaughter but if uh, if you do want to play CQC jump in Someone gave you a month of EA play for Titanfall. Did you did you enjoy um, the Titanfall 2 PvP? I just found it was a really fun game because you could jump around on walls, you got a grappling hook, like it just felt like an off the wall shooter. So to go so let's let's not shoot each other, let's just gang up on Musketeer. We gotta we gotta take this guy down. We gotta make him You feel bad shooting at people. Five. Ah, I can get that. I like shooting at people. I think it's fun. Well, in the context of, like, it's a video game. <laughs> of course. Here's Musketeer. Alright, you son of a bitch. I'm shooting your dot. Shooting your dot. Oh, look at that. Look who fell into a building. Does somebody need to dunk pilot diapers for dirty little baby? <laughs> what? No, he's hurting me. He's hurting me. Releasing Chuffies. We're too far away. He, I've got 1% hull. Yeah, to go someone's still shooting at him. He's below. Where are you at, Musketeer? Do not see him. That's not a good sign. Oh wait, that's probably because he's stealth. I see engine trails going through the circle. That power up is gone. I think they went up this way. I'm, s I'm a space tracker. He's probably hiding behind an asteroid. The little. Oh, he killed Tikoso. Where are you at? He's this way somewhere. Hmm. Uh oh. <laughs> it's like when you when you're like, I swear he was in this direction, but like he's gone. Who's that? Who's that? Oh no! Seem to be still alive. I'm attempting to rejoin, but it says it's still searching for a match, so could be really? some time. And you're in just like deathmatch mode? I think I, I think you can only um, I think the problem is it can only uh, put you in in between the matches. So like if you're waiting and then we go into lobby mode, I think that's where it looks for new players. I just want to kill, like, Musketeer oh, once. I'm in. I'm in. You're in. Nice. Okay, then I stand corrected. There you have it. CQC Dynamics. Get back here, Musketeer. I'm surprised, though. I'm still at, like, 1% hull. I thought that was him.
Let's get to your kill, Dark Heavy 8. Uh-oh. I got him! <laughs> Smacked him. I, I didn't kill him. Come on, kill him. Come on. Come on! You son of a gun. Okay, he's going through the tunnel. I'll go through the bottom. Where you be? Come on. Oh, who the hell was that that just smacked into something? No, oh, no! Apparently some guy named Sunny is in here and killed me. Awesome. Not meant to be a buzzbill. See, okay, but like, okay, so I get your point. And like, I don't like bullying either, right? I think like noob stomping and stuff like that is not stuff that I enjoy. But I think if you are, you know, competitive with friends and you're just like, like, I don't equate like shooting someone in, in a video game to be like bullying. Unless you, I think it, there can be bullying. Absolutely. Like people can use that in a, in a way that like comes across really as bullying. But I think if it's just like, you know, like competitive fun and just, you know, oh, I blew you up and got away or ah, oh, you blew me up and got away. Like I enjoy uh, dying in a video game as much as I enjoy killing someone, right? It's just the the scenario of what it looked. Oh yeah, I killed Musketeer with a little bit of help, but you know. I still got the kill, so that makes me happy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, th I think like again, it's it's just I, it comes down to intention and spirit and sort of how you're really um, approaching it, right? Like, cause he, definitely, like I hate it when like I would call like bullying would be like oh like yeah like like I'm just stomping a noob over and over again. There you go, Musketeer one. If you're stomping like a noob over and over again or you're just like trying to ruin someone's day then absolutely see look at that even this sunny guy is like higher ranked i'm telling you i posted in that cqc discord and all these like cqc guys are coming over and these guys know how to play <coughs> it's been a long time see look at that 25 experience for payback so yeah if you kill someone who killed you you get a little bit of extra points so Still you invited the tigers in to play with the pigs. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no worries. I'm Van Ticoso, and thank you for joining. I'll probably only do, like, another 15 minutes or so, but, like, now that we're in the flow of it. Like, I wish we were getting to do the team one or the capture the flag, but... Oh, no worries, Sigal. Yeah, if, you, if you're not into, like, combat in any form or fashion... I mean, the thing that, I, like, like CQC, you know 100% everyone's here with the intent of having fun in combat, right? So I don't, I would never feel bad about that. I think where, where I would feel bad is, like, you know, you're out by Sagittarius A and, like, people aren't expecting combat and you start attacking them. Like, that's where it's like, okay. Like, you're not, you're not, you're not being, um, the block. Like, if you want to do that, cool. But, like, make challenge people to duels and if they accept your duel uh then you fight them you know what i mean and like tell them that you, you know thou, thou, thou shall not pass <laughs> no one shall pass uh and, and you know then, then uh have a fair fight i think that's totally acceptable cqc like everyone you're kind of assuming that like everyone's in it for the fight right so there's musketeer again but man yeah this guy uses like Flight assist off very effectively. Ah! Damn it, he's good. Damn it, he's got really good uh, flight assist offness. But, like, yeah, I would never want to ruin someone's day, um, even in a game, right? But I enjoy combat in Elite. I, I definitely enjoy it more against people because people just are better at it and it makes it more challenging, right? Like, I feel like, you know, when you fight people in Elite, you just realize how terrible the NPCs really are, right? And that's where you, you see, like, you know, oh, wow, like, that was a cool move, or wow, I didn't know 
that weapon did that, or what you call it, right? They can play tricks on you that you never thought were possible. And it ultimately, you know, it makes you a better pilot. It's sort of just a case where you gotta accept, you know, the fact that uh, you're gonna suck at first, right? And that's, I think this is just good life advice in general, is anything you do, you're going to suck until you spend the time to get good at it, right? And there's always that, like, learning curve where, you know, at first you try it and it's kind of fun, but maybe, uh, you know, the, the more that you try at it, the more you start to realize how terrible you are at something, right? And that's where most people give up on anything, whether it's, you know, learning an instrument or, um, you know, being good in a video game or playing chess or whatever. You know, you got to get through that initial kind of hump, right? That, 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 and just realize that it's okay to suck. It's totally cool. No one cares. Like, no, you shouldn't be embarrassed about sucking. Unless your name is Musketeer, then if you sucked and your name was Musketeer, you should be embarrassed because... Oh my god, this guy's like, insane. Is that him? I can't even tell, because like, I can't get a lock on him! He's like a, he's like a ninja! But seriously, it is pretty crazy. I should try another loadout, but again, like, like I said, see, see, like, you don't even have that long between maps to, or between uh, deaths to uh, even just select one of your pre-built loadouts, let alone like go in and actually edit it. Oh, that's dark heavy. I'm, I'm like all focused on like, when I kill Musketeer, it feels good. Like, where is that guy lurking? Haita? Okay, well... Hold on, let me guess. Let me guess. Musketeer. Oh my god! Like... Don't even have a chance. Like, I don't... I, and I don't know what it is. Again, is it is it pit management? Like, I'd love to talk to this guy and, and be like, what do you need to do to become good at CQC? Where do you start, right? Like, is it all about loadout? Damn. You're okay with competition, though, and, like, ladder in Diablo? Yeah, I, I actually, I tend to prefer co-op. I think I'm definitely, like, in that camp of, like, I prefer to play a game with my friends where we have, like, a, a objective together. Like, um, even, like, the original Halo game, I thought, had a great, um, oh, I got the tryhard. Um, like, even the original Halo game had a good, like, co-op mode. And I preferred, or I, I don't think it was the original Halo, maybe it was, like, Halo 2 or whatever. But I would prefer to do a thing where, like, I'm there with my friends. We have a common objective, like, defeat these zombies, like, Left for Dead or something, right? And it's more about, you know, may, maybe the competitive aspect for, if people want it, would be in, like, who got the most kills kind of thing. But you're all kind of competing towards a goal, I tend to prefer those as well versus just like everyone's in it for themselves and it's a free for all. Out of bounds warning. But you know, uh, I, I do like my fair share of FPSs, but I, do, I don't really play that genre that much anymore. Just don't find it as compelling. I prefer games with story, with character, with um, or, or, or like really cool environments, right? Like, imagine if they put, like, more story and character to elite. And what, what what the hell? What are you doing in there? Where'd he go? Okay. He, like, I thought he, like, got stuck there. But it doesn't seem like a musketeer thing to do. If he got stuck on the building, I would be... Okay, I got a shield boost. That's lovely. Extra tankiness, always good. The enemy has the lead. Which enemy? They're all enemies. Let's see if I can get his Rowenge for him. Gotcha! 
Who be you? Haita. I'm more concerned about, yeah, who this other guy is. Yeah, Musketeer, here he is. Yeah, you can see, like, his ship is not pointing in the direction, so he is uh, definitely doing flight assist off. So that's probably actually one of the more important things, because when you are flight assist off, I'm doing that now, you're more maneuverable. Unfortunately, it's also very easy to smack into buildings, and oh my god, it didn't happen there? I'm very, very tickled. Very pleased with myself for not smacking into that wall, as per the usual. But for me, like, I definitely am, uh, like, I will use flight assist off um, to, to make, maybe make a turn sharper or in, in sort of conditional scenarios. I'm not one of those people that can always, always fly flight assist off. And, you know, it always impresses me. Like, that's where I will use it there. Yeah, like, like let me do, like, kind of a, a space power break, you know? This guy thought he was rid of me. Turns out you don't get rid of a spatula. Oh god. I'm being shot at from behind. I'm being shot at from behind. He managed to get his shields back online. Okay, okay, coming around, coming around. Commander Sunny breaking my luck. Oh no! And Busketeer from behind, as usual. He does. He is a sneaky bastard. He's a sneaky bugger. Now I'm not really sure. Like I, again, I haven't played CQC in a while. I, I, this is actually very pleasant and nostalgic for me. But um, I haven't given much mind to like the weapon types, and I don't know if these weapons are. Plasma repeaters are like, you know, are, is this what people generally agree on is a good weapon, or... Where'd he go? What the hell? This guy's just like a magician. It's like David Copperfield. Oh god, he's got the bad things. Yeah, those are weapon... The red ones are the weapon boosters, so... His already deadliness is going to be amplified. We can maybe get this hole between us and just hide by the pole oh my god oh my god running away running away run away <laughs> who do we got up here uh, girder I think that might be him but it does really, it is really interesting to me that like silent running is definitely a, a coveted aspect, right? Because I can't even see this guy. Damn it, I just had my shields online. Let him run past. Oh no! That was my clever tactic of just sit there and do nothing and maybe he'll go away. You can, you can uh, join my Spatula School of Self-Defense. Spatula Space School of Self-Defense. Ooh, we got a weapon. I'll take that. Now I have a very short amount of time to use it. We just need to find Musketeer. And shoot him in the face. And kill him. That's it. Just three things on the to-do list. <laughs> That's not him, but I will kill you anyway. Yeah, that worked. I did what I was going to say, and I said what I was going to do. And I got no regrets. Flight assist off. We're going to line him up. It looks like Musketeer's trying to steal my kill. That will not happen. Not on my watch. Oh no. Who got that? Commander Sunny. Oh no. Musketeer got me. The game is over. Winner's Musketeer. I wonder I wonder I wonder who won that one. So I guess it's like score to eight hundred. It seems to me not like a great system.
Again, it is really interesting to see these guys, though. Um, just the, the skill of it, right? Dark Heavy, are you still in the loading screen? Yo, Dark. Maybe he fell asleep in the loading screen for CQC. Uh, I'm going to try this one. I do like the burst lasers. You do have to kind of be close to the guy, but... I need gimbaled. I'm going to just pop back into... I just want to see... All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, just imagine, like, one day I might actually get good at this, right? One day. <laughs> well, I feel like, yeah, like, like CQC, if it was given a little bit of a proper treatment, a balanced pass, maybe, you know, and then just something that people could jump into. I mean, how would you connect it to the, the main game more? And this is this might feel controversial. I would like to see, um, like, you get autopilot. Like, or let's say you can plot a course to Colonia, for example. And then during your um, journey, you could play CQC. And your ship would just jump on its own. Who was trying to steal my kill? Oh, you. Hi, Musketeer. Yeah, these burst lasers. The ship seems a little more able to match his maneuverability. And don't hit the asteroid. Where'd he go? Oh, damn it. He died. Commander Sunny got him. Well, as long as he's dead. And now I got the damage. I got the damage. What's your damage, son? Oh, don't steal my kill! Oh, you just stole my kill. You know what I'm gonna do to you now? I'm gonna damage your pride by exploding. And my guts will fill your canopy. My intestines will block your vision. Why'd you start me out of bounds? I do love uh, flying through the hoops as well. That's another missed opportunity that I feel is an elite is just like, you have the mechanic for rings and for collecting things as you go through the rings. So why are there not race courses? I get that there'd probably be some other um, things you would need to do to make a proper race course, but it just seems like something that I think would please a lot of people. Though, I don't know, maybe the racing community is quite small. Trying to hit him without targeting, and it's like, oh my god. Where'd he go? I don't know how he does that! <laughs> like, how does he do that? He literally just disappeared. Oh my god. Alright, well I'm gonna say this one's the last match anyway, and then I'm gonna call it a night, but... Also, there are barrels you can explode. Here's one such barrel. Boom boom. As to the usefulness of that barrel, I don't know, I don't know. Oh my. Better to die trying than to live long enough to become a villain. Something like that. Of course, Musketeer swooped in and just got the kill. This guy must be like one of the few people, though, that does have elite CQC. If he's not elite CQC, I don't know, where can you look these things up? Like other players' profiles or whatever. 
There he is, snipe him. All I do, all, I don't even want to kill anyone but him. Oh my god! Alright, well there you go. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's going to be uh, enough CQC for me today. <laughs> Definitely was a, 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 a plethora of uh, unvictories. But, you know, getting a little bit of precious experience. And, you know, I am getting up there to... Good effort. Oh, thank you. Try harder. God damn it. Make up your mind. Anyway, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm ranked 38. And I think once you get to 50, that's all you need to do to get... Um, prestige or whatever and then you can go to the CQC system as for the elite ranking I don't care but we'll just go back into open and see if I'm able to actually like deliver my goods for the CG finally I don't know if CQC counts as notoriety decreasement are you there Dirk? yeah alright let's see am I anonymous here? yes can I pay off my fines? No. So I don't know. I guess I'll just sit here for like, I'll just leave the game running for like an hour and just like chill in my ship. And that reduces your notoriety. Just literally chilling. I'm just gonna sit here and chill. But um, I will stop streaming so that you guys can go watch a, I think Ghost Draft is streaming, streaming right now. So if you do like Ghost Draft, get on over there and check them out if they're still going. But thank you guys for joining in, in for the CQC this week. I think next week we're probably going to have to recomb the bubble, a double comb over, to find a new system for our minor faction application. But, um, you know, we'll see as well if there's uh, some follow-up to this community goal. I do hope that we get to uh, see what happens with the Scrivener's clan and the fate of their dredger ship. But thank you guys very much for joining. I hope you have the great rest of the day. And stay dangus. This is Spatula, signing out. Bye-bye.